Hey everyone, this is Andrew Tan. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to show you how to install a PlayStation 2 emulator called PCSX2 on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. So the version I'm going to be using is Telecrinkle's port of the PCSX2 emulator for the macOS operating system. The main discussion for this is held on the PCSX2 forums. I'm going to be referring to this particular GitHub page, which I'll leave a link to in the description. I've actually already created a tutorial for this already. However, I'm going to be using a slightly different method in order to get the very latest files. So I'm going to minimize this and then continue onto the GitHub page for PCSX2 made by Telecrinkle here. So when we get to this page, this contains all of the source code for the Mac port of PCSX2. And on the right here, we have the releases section. So this is the created binaries for the latest version of the Mac OS build of this emulator. As you can see here, this was released 25 days ago. So I can click on here and I can go down and scroll and I can go ahead and select the second one here. This 64-bit version is going to be compatible for the M1 Apple Silicon Mac and also any Mac running Mac OS Catalina or onwards. So this will definitely work. However, because this is very much an emulator that's a work in progress, we might want to get a version that's slightly newer. So if we go back here and we go to the action section here, and then we can click on macOS builds here, we can actually see that Telecrinkle is extremely active when it comes to updating the actual builds of the software. So we can see here, this person's been working on it three days ago, but most notably 23 hours ago, even 11 hours ago, there have been fixes and updates that have been added to this piece of software. If you wanted to check the very latest version, let's say the releases build hasn't been updated for a really long time, we might want to make use of one of the very latest builds. So we're going to experiment a little bit. Obviously, if you use one of these workflow runs, we are using something that's not really been tested properly. It's only 11 hours old, and it's very unlikely other people are going to be using exactly the same piece of software. So it's going to be very hard to debug and fix issues if you're using something that's so new. However, it's something that you might want to experiment with, especially if there hasn't been a release for a while. So basically, in order to get the build for here, we need to click on this specific workflow. So I'm going to click on this GS Metal one. So once we've got to this build section here, we want to be able to download this artifact. So if we go to this page, we can't actually download this unless we actually sign into our account. So we can go ahead and sign up for a free account if you don't have one already, or we can just click sign in here and sign into your current account. So once we've signed in, we'll see that this link is now clickable. So I'm going to click on this now. And then we've gone ahead and downloaded the latest version of the software. So I'm going to click on the finder button here. We're going to go to downloads. So once we get to our downloads folder, we're going to double click on the PCSX2.tar and we'll extract the PCSX2 application. Then we're going to drag this into our applications folder and let go. And then we have the PCSX2 icon here. So now what I'm going to do is double click on here to open it. And now we have PCSX2 and this is the version that we've just downloaded from that particular artifact. So the setup is going to be pretty standard. The first thing you need to do is to set up the BIOS. So we're going to go to config and then general settings. And we're going to click on BIOS here. And what we need to do is to acquire the BIOS file. So I've done this already. They're relatively easy to find on the internet. I'm gonna to go to my PlayStation 2 BIOS folder here. These are the files that you'll need. They're pretty easy to find online. Just do a search on Google for PS2 BIOS. So I'm just gonna locate this by going to browse here and then going to desktop, emulation, PlayStation 2, and then my BIOS. This is where I've downloaded them all. I'm gonna press open here. And here we're gonna select the European BIOS here. I'll click OK. And then what we need to do next is to make sure that we can actually open a game. So we're going to test a game now. All we need to do is select PCSX2, select DVD here, ISO selector. So if you want to find a PlayStation 2 game, it's relatively simple to find. All you need to do is to do a search for PS2 ISO and then the name of the game. Here we're going to load up the game Tekken 5. So once that's loaded up here, we're going to boot the ISO. So I'll click boot ISO here. The first thing it's going to ask us is to receive keystrokes. I'll click open system preferences here and then click this padlock icon, type in a password, and then make sure that PCSX2 has got access to keystrokes. So at this stage, it's quite a good idea to have a Bluetooth wireless controller attached. I've got my Xbox One wireless controller here. It was quite easy to set up using Bluetooth. All we have to do is to press the pair button on the controller, and then we can pair it up in the Bluetooth settings here. And PCSX2 is going to automatically detect that controller. If you have any issues, what you can do is to go to the gamepad settings here and then rebind this. You can also rebind it using the keyboard as well. However, I do advise using a controller. So I'm just going and running Tekken 5, and if you hear some clacking noises, that's just from the controller. And we are playing at native resolution, which isn't great, but we are getting not too bad speeds. So you can see the frame rate counter is at the top of this menu bar here. And this is actually running much better than on my M1 MacBook Air 2020 with eight gigabytes of RAM. In the last tutorial I did for this, this wasn't really running at full speed. 
However, this seems to be running much better on the base M1 Pro. I'm recording this on the M1 Pro with eight CPU cores and 10 GPU cores, and it's just running way better than what it was on the M1 MacBook Air. Not sure if that's because of the improved software and all the development that's happened, or the improved hardware, the extra GPU cores and the extra two performance cores. However, this is pretty much running perfectly. I know we don't have the widescreen mode enabled, however, this is only available on the OpenGL side and we are just running the software mode at native resolution. It doesn't look particularly pretty, but it does actually work quite nicely. So yeah, we can see it's pretty solid at 59.94, which is the default highest frame rate for the system. So anyway, this is how you basically run PlayStation 2 games on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.